So on September the 27th, so not long ago, I uploaded this video here, where as well as introducing you to my rather questionable financial advice hat, where some people said I look like a peaky blinder that no one would be afraid of, thank you for that, I introduced you to an active investment fund on the Vanguard platform that I thought offered an interesting alternative to the ever popular life strategy fund. Spoiler alert, it had actually performed a little bit better too, which really threw the cat amongst the pigeons on the old passive versus active debate. The fund in question was this, the Global Balanced Fund. But much like this guy on a weekend, it is putting on a new outfit, borrowing its wife's lipstick and heels to change what it looks like to try and impress. Now there's an image for you when you close your eyes at night. The fund is about to change how it's invested and what it's called. And there are costs to pay too, which we as the investors are expected to bear. So let's have a look at this in detail and decide whether this is a good thing, like when I bought Tesla stock all those years ago, or a bad thing, like that image of me in drag. So very briefly, the Global Balance Fund is an actively managed fund looked after by the Wellington Management Company, has about £235 million in assets under management, and has about two thirds in stocks and one third in bonds. It typically holds shares in a big mix of large and mid-sized companies, as well as adopting both growth and value styles of investing, and its bond holdings are pretty straightforward in being that they are government and corporate bonds. It costs 0.48% a year in management fees and tends to be pretty middle of the road from a risk perspective. It's had pretty solid returns, actually beating its passive cousin, the Life Strategy 60% fund, over recent years, which I went through in the previous video. So what's changing? But well, it's all about sustainability. You may have come across the term ESG in your time here on YouTube, and that stands for environmental, social, and governance. And this is a really hot topic at the moment with investors applying these non-financial measures to really decide on risks and opportunities and essentially decide what companies to buy and what companies not to buy. This Global Balance Fund is restructuring its assets in order to adopt more of an ESG approach and it's changing its name too. Drum roll, please. The Vanguard Sustainable Life 60 to 70% Equity Fund. So moving forward, it's actually going to be applying some sustainability criteria to what investments it holds, and the fund must adhere to these new conditions. These criteria are going to be an integral part of evaluating the investment decisions the fund makes. They feel these factors can have a material impact on a company's competitiveness and performance. And I think the way that things are going, I think they're probably right. But it's as much about what they won't look to include in the portfolio as what they will, as they start to screen their investments under this new microscope. What they're looking for is they will not buy into a company that they feel their product or their service has a negative impact on society or the environment. This includes things like tobacco, coal, guns, which funnily enough are Drag Tom's idea of a good night out. They are also going to be very interested in companies' net zero targets, and this will form part of their research. They want to see that companies have a net zero target by 2050 so that that is in alignment with the Paris Agreement. They are so hot on this in fact that they are telling Wellington, the fund manager, that they want them to ramp up their holdings all the way up to 100% by 2050. So what that means is that every single company in the fund would have committed to this net zero cause by 2050. Which seems like a bold move at first, but the more you think about it, I don't think by that point any decent company won't be committed to some kind of net zero cause. It will almost be expected. Now there's loads more detail about the specifics that was issued in a communication by Vanguard, a link to which I'll leave in the description for this video, which is a PDF file that goes all the way through it. But is this change a good one? Or is it like me, in my wife's tight, strutting around the kitchen, Tina Turner turned up to 11, and is in fact not a pretty sight? Why do I do this to myself? One day my children will watch these videos. That'll be fun at school. Well first, let's consider what it will cost, how that actually works in practice, and why the hell do we have to pay? As a result in the change of this investment policy, the portfolio will need to be realigned to this new approach, and that will incur costs which will be borne by the fund. 
Now, that doesn't mean a Vanguard rep will be knocking on your door with their cap in hand asking for their costs. In reality, what it means is it will just affect the value of the fund. And just to be clear, that's only going one direction, and it ain't upwards, at least in the short term. The portfolio needs to be realigned to meet this new set of criteria. And what that means in practice is that some assets might need to be sold and others bought in order to fall more in line with this approach. And there are costs for doing this, which will come out of the value of the fund. Now you may be sat there thinking, this feels somewhat unfair. I didn't choose for this to happen. But I have to tell you, portfolio restructures are not that uncommon. I'm not trying to whip up some kind of scandal here. This one could be quite a big one. It all depends how out of whack their current holdings are with this new ESG approach. I have read a quote from Vanguard which states, they do not consider the cost to be material. Make of that what you will. They're hoping they're not going to be huge, but they're not putting a number on it. They are keen to point out that the risk profile of the fund is not changing, so it will remain a middle of the road, four out of seven on their scale level of risk. So it should remain suitable for any investors already in the fund and the annual management charge of 0.48% per annum is not changing either. A spokesperson from Vanguard said these changes are being made to meet clients' needs and are intended to formalise the responsible investment criteria used to manage the fund and will come into effect later in the year. There will be no change to the fund's investment objective. Well, these changes are in fact actually coming into play on the 8th of December, so very soon indeed. I know what it's like. No one likes change. I don't even like it when there's a different brand of shreddies in the cupboard. I mean, malted Wheaties. What the hell are these? But this is a direction of travel that is becoming more and more prominent. And you can see that even within Vanguard's own ranks as they increase their own ESG range recently, launching a corporate bond ETF. I did wonder at first, why not just launch a sustainable fund, a new one, and leave this one alone? But I think they really want to lean more into this ESG approach. And I think going forward, that will almost become the standard. In every fund, will adhere to some kind of ESG approach in differing levels. Whether this will be good or bad will remain to be seen in the future, I suppose. I think there will be a little drag on short-term performance, if nothing else, through these portfolio realignment costs, but they are promising that not to be huge. When I started in financial advice many years ago, ethical investing, as it was badged up then, was bloody awful. There were absolutely no options for clients who wanted to make ethical investments, and the few that did exist performed horribly. But a lot of time has passed since then, and ethical investing has come on a long, long way. So I'm actually not worried about this change. And as I've already said, I actually think that this is simply the direction of travel, and no decent company in years to come will not have some kind of ESG approach. I wonder if I'll have to change my name if I keep dressing up. What do you think? Mary? Susan? Or am I more of a Maud? I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. Leave me a comment below. You can create my alter ego. Anyway, it's late and it's Friday night, so you know what that means. Babe, can I borrow your fishnets? I really like the way they feel. Maybe I'll try some mascara.